Okay, uh, thank you. Welcome back to the second portion of our workshop. And uh, today we are going to go over four additional modules. And then I, ho I hope I can help you to in increase your understanding uh, on traffic flow model, OD estimation, traffic signal, as well as some very advanced vehicle routing algorithm. So in these four modules, uh, I would like to begin with the traffic flow theory. And uh, before I go into more details, after module one and four, I hope you can understand some very advanced uh, visualization feature in Nesta. For example, the synchronized display, uh, in which you can display the traffic scenario on two different views, and then you can synchronize the, the zoom in and the zoom out and many options options to, to, to compare the different scenarios. The second advanced feature I fully encourage you to use is this vehicle analysis dialog. Uh, in this particular slide, I want to show you step number one, click on the vehicle button. Slide number two, step number two, click on the origin destination. Step number three, click on the OD list. Step number four, click on the path list. So, so after you have this step one, two, three, four, you should be able to visualize uh, those corresponding vehicles and uh, uh, also check the statistics. We are going to utilize these two advanced features extensively in today's uh, discussion. Okay, so let's uh, begin with our traffic flow theory. This presentation is prepared by uh, Jiang Tao, Tony Liu, and uh, uh, he has been working with me on this traffic congestion propagation, preparing all the details for uh, uh, traffic flow network modeling. Thank you. So in this module five, we are going to have three uh, learning objectives. Number one, we try to understand the major input and output data for our DTA light. Uh, number two, we hope I can help you to understand how to identify bottleneck and how to model the uh, traffic congestion. Number three, I'd like to compare analytically how the traffic congestion is calculated and uh, how the simulator uh, produced some similar results. So uh, you have some data set, you can download the corresponding data set from the GitHub uh, link over there. So uh, by the end of the day, if you install this, if you install this particular um, GNU plot, you should be able to visualize the time axis, the space axis, and try to calculate the shock wave. And also, this is a uh, traffic flow, traffic density. By using this analytical formulation, you can really literally show here is a shock wave. The red line here is a shock wave, which corresponding to the shock wave between the green block and the yellow block. So let's begin with our three corridor network. So before I'm going to the three corridor network introduction, I would like to just show a few more slides for you to understand how important for you to understand all the basic attributes for these three corridor network. For example, we have these corridor one, corridor two, corridor three. We only have one OD pair. The one OD pair starting from origin zone 42 to node two. Okay. So I also want to utilize this particular slide to show, to show you all the important attributes we already have. A, Item A, OD demand matrix, as you can show here. Item B, the network. Item C, activity location. Item D, vehicle generation, which corresponds to the vehicle attribute database in our uh, agent file. Item E, we can calculate the dynamic travel time. In the beginning, we just use the shortest path, the shortest distance as the the, the path selection. Then we go to root choice, 
dynamic network modeling, dynamic network loading. Then we have the different uh, I vehicle attribute, J pre information, K least cost shortest pass, F and uh, instant work zone. Uh, uh, the related information for you to really going through network demand active location all the way to calculate the results then feed everything back to the dynamic travel time we go through this iteration by iteration again at the first iteration we use the shortest path uh, for the simplest rule choice assumption okay i have here a full list of uh, input data in nesta so let's go through them one by one to be more familiar with the Nesta uh, data set. Number one, input note. In this input note file, we have the following important, very important attributes, coordinates and the control type. Link, so we have input link.csv. Room, we have input room.csv. We have the wrong definition for the OD demand matrix. Input activity location, in which we provide the mapping from the zone number to the physical nodes at the origin or at the destination nodes when we calculate the shortest path. Input demand file list at the item number five, and uh, in the input demand file list, you can specify different demand format, demand, different file names. So this is input demand .csv is a one example in all three corridor uh, data set. You can use a different file names uh, in our as, as, as we demonstrated in our previous exercise. Number six, input scenario setting. So in this input scenario setting, you can specify the number of iterations. You can specify different traffic flow model. You can specify the different traffic assignment model and the signal representation. So the major two outputs you have is item number seven, output agent, and output time-dependent MOE. Okay, so after we have this particular network, uh, you can try to look at link by link, for example, one, three, four, five, six, and uh, for simplicity, all the distance or all the link length in this first corridor is one mile. The free flow travel time will be also one minute if you are assuming the uh, speed limit is 60 miles per hour. And uh, we have link capacity uh, as demonstrated here. So for the free flow travel time, we have three corridors. The first corridor, we have path number one, path number two, path number three. For the free flow travel time, the first pass is 11 minutes. Second pass is 12 minutes. The third pass is 70 minutes. So for the first path, we call this as a major freeway. For the second path, we call this as alternative arterial corridor. And uh, the path number three is the alternative freeway with a different capacity setup. So I also want to highlight the bottleneck we have is between link 9 to 10 and also 10 to 11 okay and uh, we have this corresponding step for you to to look at the path travel time again step number one click on the path layer step number two right click define your origin and the destination step number three you can try to uh, uh, make sure you define the intermediate node to to force the corresponding path going through this first corridor. Okay, and uh, I will try to spend some time to go through these three different cases and uh, with the different uh, demand multipliers for you to understand how the traffic congestion is being propagated as an illustration here. So we have node one, two, three, four, five. This is node eight, this is node nine, this is node 10. So for the link, from A to 9, we have three lanes. From 9 to 10, we have two lanes. So we can call this node 9 is the interfacing node between the bottleneck or the before the bottleneck. Okay, so let's go to the case number one. If we have a perfect D 
demand equals to supply pattern. So in this data set, in this data set, we have eight, nine, and a ten. The bottleneck is the corresponding link on nine to ten. Okay, you may have different traffic states. The state A is the demand entering the link A to nine. The state C is the static traffic state from nine to ten. Why do we have this? Because when you try to change four from the three lane facility to the two lane facility, the number of lane miles will be changed. Even you do not have, even you do not have a, a congestion propagation, but you will see the traffic density is changed. Okay, so um, we also provide the time and the space trajectory to show you the correspondence between the uh, Q and the K diagram. Okay. You can try to read through the details first. Uh, in this limited time period, I would like to uh, help you to for familiar with the NASTA uh, interface. Okay. In this particular space-time trajectory, you can see this is the state A, this is the state C, this is the state O, and then along this line, we have the shock wave propagating from A to B. Okay, so uh, uh, the first step, let's try to check the value of traffic demand. In total, we have 7200 vehicles per time period or for per two hours. And also, our limited capacity on path number one is 36 hundred vehicles per hour per link. So one link has two lanes. So since we have the demand time period of two hours, we are going to send also every hour 3600 vehicles through the bottleneck. Okay, so we are going to run the traffic simulation using the newest model and uh, you will see some uh, simulation results along the way. So let me try to switch back to the NASA interface to go through those details one more time. Okay, here we go. We open up the NASA interface. And if you want to open this particular data set, you can go to our uh, learning document, go to data set two, three corridor, and uh, you can get the corresponding uh, uh, project file. Okay, so what we have now is the uh, network. This network is uh, slightly different from what we describe, uh, what we describe uh, in the slides because we have this uh, node 1 and uh, node 2 only. So first of all, let's try to increase the node size. So I click on the node layer plus so you can see the node number. Okay, second one, we try to show the number of lanes for each link. So let's try to click on the configuration button. And then you can try to show on this link text table, try to show number of lanes. So what you see here, three lanes, three lanes, three lanes, all the way to node nine. So you have three lane facility, two lane facility. If you want to increase the size of the link text, you can click on this uh, configuration button again to increase or decrease using this plus and a minus uh, for the link size. You can also see the link capacity, link capacity, and other information along this line. Okay, so I click on num to disable the display of those information. Okay. As we always mention, we have different path. So I go to the path layer, click on the node number one, define origin, then define the def destination. So the first path, according to the distance, they go through this uh, a middle corridor. Okay. So what we need to do here, make sure we have the path layer, 
and then I click on the node number six, and then I add an intermediate destination here. So by doing so, I force the path going through this intermediate destination, then we got a path. So now we can click on this path dialog. Okay, we can see in this path we have the corresponding we have the corresponding link list and that distance is all one mile. And if you further click on the speed count to density count to we will see count to you should be able to see the GNU plot I displayed. Uh, in this particular demonstration, I do not have the GNU plot being installed on this machine, so I defer this task to the advanced users. Okay, you can also click on the menu of data to explore the path statistics to the external CSV file. For example, click on this Excel, then you can get the all the information along this path, including the link sequence, form node, to node, length, speed limit, free flow, number of flames. So as you can see, we try to encourage you to explore the data in between the graphic user interface and Excel. Okay. Now it's time for us to look at the demand statistics. So to look at the demand file, we go to the file, we go to the project folder, open the project folder. Okay. Inside this project folder, we go to the input input demand file list first. So in this input demand file list, in colon H and I, the starting time in minutes and ending time in minutes is 420 and 540. Uh, 420 means hour seven and uh, end time in minutes is 540 means these are uh, hour nine okay. okay another important parameter we should have here is colon f colon f loading multiplier number one Or 1.0. Okay. So we have the corresponding file input demand uh, in the uh, format of column. Close this first. And then we go to the input demand.csv. So by doing so, I just want to verify the information we have in this database. We have Form zone ID, we have two zone ID, we have the number of trips, and uh, from one to two, these are 3200. So by dividing for two hours, two hours, you can get 3600 vehicles per hour. Okay. I can also verify two important uh, uh, zone files. Uh, the one is input zones. So we have many zones from one to two. We also define some additional zones for VMS or other scenario application. Okay. And uh, we also define the input activity location. The input activity location defined from zone ID to the node ID. In this uh, external OD flag, you can define zero as the indicator for a node serving as receiving and a sending node. If you define as a one or minus one, and then this node will be served as the physical origin or physical destination only, particularly for the external uh, nodes. Okay. okay, so we're going back to the uh, simulation results. To run the simulation, you can click on this run button and you can get the newest model. We do not have the traffic uh, control simulation and we use one iteration. By one iteration, what we mean here is we just force all the travelers using the shortest path. In the later presentation, we are trying to use 
20 iterations to for us to reach the user equilibrium condition. Okay, so with these statistics, let's try to look at the link MOE and also look at the the path propagation. Okay. So the link MOE I would like to utilize is first of all look at the animation. So how the vehicles are running on this network. So first of all, if you look at the clock bar from 7 to 9, did you recognize we have the vehicle animation for the first corridor? Okay, and also we can go to the density. In the density flag, okay, let me try to disable the path information first. Okay, and you can try to increase let me go to the hour number eight. Increase the bandwidth of the link display. So you have one to two. So you can see here we have the link density. The link width is the volume. Okay. Then you can also look at the speed information. You can look at the queue. We don't have any queue here. Okay. So if you only look at those visualiza visualization, which is not enough, you should look at the link performance. By, by using the link performance, you can compare the statistics link by link at different time periods. For example, I click on this link performance, select this link three to four, Okay, so I have the traffic volume, I have the density. Okay, you can do this uh, simple calculation to verify the the link density on this first link is twenty vehicles per mile per lane. I can also click on this lane from this link from nine to ten. So you can see we have increased. We have increased density on this uh, 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 downstream bottleneck. So if you again, if you try to click on these two links together simultaneously, you need to use a control key. You can try to click, click, and uh, by clicking multiple links, uh, all the information will be uh, displayed here. Okay. Uh, we have up plot, we have lower plot. You can also click on the lower plot by displaying their speed information. So you can see all the speed, all the speed measure along this corridor is 60 miles per hour. 60 miles per hour. Okay, we don't have any traffic congestion uh, because the, the total capacity supply is equal to the total demand uh, inflow. You can try to explore the data into the CSV file. Okay, okay. So uh, by doing so, you already finish all the link MOE comparison. Then you can go to the vehicle dialog. If you go to the vehicle dialog, you can see we only have one major OD pair from one to two, a total of seventy-two hundred vehicles for the simulation horizon. This is the average travel time of 11 minutes, average distance of 11 miles, average speed should be 60, 60 exactly, but uh, numerical you know, uh, aggregation uh, issues can, can create uh, that, uh, uh, 59.8 minutes. Okay. We don't have any standard deviation for the travel time because they are quite stable. Okay. We only have one path, so by clicking on this path, you should be able to show the path on the background. So I click on this link. I didn't see this path because you need to highlight this path dialog here. Okay. So if I go back to the slides, uh, I have 
try to show some additional information to visualize the result of simulation. One is the output summary. At this point, we have not gone through the output summary, so I'm, I'm going to spend a few minutes to go into the details. Uh, in the output summary, we have this total volume over capacity in the simulation results. So as you can see, the volume over capacity ratio on the critical bottleneck from 10 to 11 is 1, from 9 to 10 is a 1, and the rest of links, they have the volume over capacity ratio as 0.93. Okay, You can also view the traffic status on the path dialog, and uh, you can use a, a GNU plot to visualize these results. So by looking at this space-time diagram, this the time axis, this is the sp space axis. What we display here is the dynamic density. So you can see between no 9 to 11, we have a red period. This red block corresponding to a very high density. And this yellow block corresponding to a low density. Okay, And we also we check the MLE as we suggested. And we check the bottleneck link. And then we check the density. And then we verify we got the perfect simulation result as we display in this space-time diagram. Time, space. All the traffic is driving at a free-flow condition, but they have the corresponding link density. And the propagation time, not available because there's no queue propagation. So let's take a break, and then we go back to the multiplier equals to 1.2. Okay, welcome back. So we are going to go through this case 2, case 3, by increasing the demand multipliers from 1.2 to 1.3. Okay. So in this exercise, uh, if the demand multiplier is 1.2, the only OD demand is 0 0.5 times 7200 times 1.2, which is 4320. The limited capacity of path one, path 1 is 3600. So now the demand is slightly uh, higher than the path capacity. So let's try to go to the demand file list. We change the demand multiplier from 1.0 from 1 to 1 1.2. We still run the simulation only for one iteration, which means we force all the traffic going through the uh, uh, shortest path in distance. Okay, you will see the corresponding link MOE and the s traffic propagation in terms of the density. Okay, then you will see the link MOE in the simulated speed for link A to nine. Uh, after after a few minutes, the traffic speed will be dropped to a certain level. And the density will be increased from 30 to 80. And then uh, you can try to uh, calculate the traffic uh, congestion propagation speed. Okay. And then uh, later on, I will try to show you to compare the link MLE and uh, uh, by comparing two links from 7 to 8, 8 to 9, you should be able to calculate the propagation time about 10 minutes. So uh, again, uh, using this uh, uh, slide, I want to show uh, by using this control plus mouse click, you should be able to obtain the link MOE statistics for multiple links. Okay. The uh, propagation time is uh, 40 minutes in my standard answer. And uh, I want to show you also the graphic method we calculate. So in this result, state O, a, B, and C corresponding to the different statistics. Okay, and uh, you can check on section A, section B, we have the corresponding uh, speed region. So at uh, state B, the state B is right here, state B, the speed should be 
15 miles per hour. Okay, the density should be 72 vehicle per mile per lane. Okay. So before I go into the case three, let's try to visualize the results. So for the students, you're going back to the Nesta interface. Okay. Now I have three different cases. So if I go to this particular case, in order to check how many vehicles you already load, you can always go to the file, open project folder. Okay. Even my, uh, my, my folder name tells you I have 1.2 at the demand multiplier. You should go to the demand file list. Click on the demand file list. Now we verify the loading multiplier is 1.2. Okay, loading multiplier is 1.2. Okay. okay. I also want to verify this result by checking the output summary. The output summary statistics is our major output. So you can see, first of all, here is the release date of the package. This data block is a number of nodes, number of links. Okay. And we have the link type statistics uh, collected uh, based on your link attributes, the static attributes. Then we only run for one iteration. So we have a long list in this table. The CPU running time, the per iteration CPU running time, number of agents. So this number is 8640. You can quickly try to do this calculation to verify. 7200 times 1.2. Okay, yes, 8640. So the average travel time has been increased to 23 minutes. And the travel time index now is 2.09. So now we also have other statistics such as travel time and the different minutes. So you can see the travel time for every 15 minutes is the travel time at 7, travel time at 7.15, travel time at 7.30. Okay, those travel time at the different time periods will be increased. Okay. We have a rich data set to show you different statistics. So we have the time dependent link MOE, time dependent network MOE, and the time dependent OD MOE. So you can check all the uh, corresponding details later on. And uh, how to configure this link MOE, you can uh, check the user's guide by checking the input MOE settings. Okay. So now going back to the Nesta interface. Okay. One thing I'm going to see here is path. We can try to define the path information origin, destination, passing through this intermediate, passing through this intermediate node. Okay, let me try one more time. Destination here, passing through this intermediate node. So we can get the corresponding uh, link information. Okay. So if you click on the vehicle, we can have on this on this path, we have the average travel time of 23 minutes. Let's try to utilize this dialog vehicle data analysis for the least OD pair. Okay. In this summary dialog, you can have on this axis every 50 minutes, you can try to have their uh, uh, number of vehicles, and also the average travel time. So you can see uh, from the free flow travel time of 12 minutes, the travel time will be steadily increased to 33 minutes. Okay. 
let's try to use the link MLE performance dialog to compare the traffic queue propagation. Okay, so let me try to increase the node number display a little bit. Okay, so we know that this node 9 is the interfacing of the bottleneck. So I can use the configuration button to show the lane capacity, lane capacity, the level of service, and uh, the average simulation speed. If you look at the average simulation speed, on 9 to 10, still 60 miles per hour, and on link from 8 to 9 is a 16, 17, 20. So we do have some Q spill back. You can also look at the average travel time. Again, by setting up this particular network, the average travel time should be one minute per link. Now the average simulated travel time is increased uh, to three minutes for other nodes. Okay. So what I try to do here is I try to further use a link MLE to compare the uh, traffic queue propagation. So what I try to do here is, first of all, let's look at the downstream link from 10 to 11. So let's look at here, from 10 to 11. Okay. The most interesting traffic state for me is the traffic density. So I look at the traffic density. And I can also try to show on the lower part the traffic speed. Okay. Now you can try to click on link from 9 to 10 so they have the same traffic state. Then after you try to click on the link A to 9, you will have the different, now you will have the different traffic congestion layer and uh, uh, on link A to 9 you can see a huge a dramatic increase in the density and a dramatic decrease in the speed. Okay. If I use this control key again, click on the link 7 to 8 just as I try to show to you guys on my presentation slide. So you can see this particular time interval is corresponding to the traffic congestion time period, which is uh, 40 minutes if you verify that. So how to verify this numerically? Uh, you can always use data, explore the link MLE to the CSV file, and then you can try to filter out the corresponding elements, and then literally compare their queue propagation time. Okay. If I further click one more link, link 6 to 7, you can see how this traffic density is being increased and how the traffic speed is being decreased. By doing so, I hope you can get a very deep understanding about this Q spill back. And uh, if you have opportunity, it's always a good idea for you to compare, just as I want to show on this slide, this QK relationship and the analytical calculation so that you can literally verify the results. And uh, if you go to the GitHub, we do have a lesson two uh, document to show literally is about, uh, we have a, a, a total of uh, 60 pages for you to show all the uh, calculation details. So for those students who might not know the location of the uh, uh, documents, let me just go to this particular project. And if you go to the documents, okay, on this document number five, learning document traffic flow theory, if you click on this link, all the information will be clearly discussed thanks to the effort of uh, Jiang Tao Liu.
now we can also going back to the demand multiplier from 1.2 to 1.3 okay by changing this demand multiplier from 1.2 to 1.3 is quite straightforward let me just use uh, the presentation mode okay you can see the simulated density you can try to use a, cal a graphic method to verify your calculation results and uh, you can have the corresponding uh, traffic queue propagation statistics then the propagation time is nine minutes this is a list as one of the homework question in the learning document so you may say wow this is quite simple in terms of the rule choice because typically we have multiple routes and we have multiple traffic you know, iterations in the standard traffic assignment so the, in the next small example I would like to show you these are three corridor example with the tolling information so again in this uh, origin one destination two we have the physical free flow travel time 11 minutes 12 minutes and 17 minutes so in this case if all the vehicle running through this uh, least shortest path based on the link free flow travel time they only select just uh, the shortest path of 23 minutes okay as I already introduced your uh, concept of generalized cost you have travel time times VOT T plus tall and you can try to literally calculate either the generalized cost or the generalized travel time in our routing formulation in the next example I try to show you if you place a tall on this particular link from 4 to 5 so in the data format you have scenario 0 the starting day is 0 ending day is 1 starting time is 7 20 minutes ending time is 5 20 you can have uh, 0 0.2 dollars 0 0.2 dollars on this toll okay how does the simulator take into account of this 0 0.2 dollar so if you use a generalized link travel time generalized link travel time we have this particular formula so the generalized link travel time equals to travel time on this link i to j and uh, the toll value divide by value of time so in all demand type if we specify the demand type one with the average VOT of time dollars per hour so the calculation will be 11 times 0 0.2 dollars divided by 10 dollars per hour and then further divide by uh, 60 minutes per hour in this denominator so we got 12.2 minutes which is more than the free flow travel time of path number two so in this case all the vehicles will stay will uh, still select this uh, path number two because they cannot afford the toll uh, in this uh, uh, iteration if we change the average VOT to 20 minutes then you can see uh, we can we can see the generalized path travel time of path number one is 11.6 minutes 11.6 minutes which is less than the 12 minutes free flow travel time on path number two then in this case all the vehicles that are heavy in that are uh, uh, high income travelers they will still stay on this path number one to avoid any you know either traffic congestion or being detoured to save their uh, average travel time so I also have I also have one more example before I, re I move to the OD estimation I have a Nesta interface open up the data set go to the data set I have the pricing and the information open up this dialog 
So I can also put some tall value here. So typically, when I try to analyze this tall value, I will uh, click on the vehicle dialog again. Okay. And then try to see how many paths do they select. Path number one, path number two. I need to make sure the path has been selected. Path number one, path number two. Okay, and also we can try to show the corresponding statistics. Path number one, travel time is a 59 minutes, and the path number two is 11.4 minutes. Okay, and uh, we can try to show the animation. Thank you.